Welcome to another AQA Comp 1 2013 uh, program exam solution tutorial. We're going to look at brute forcing the Caesar cipher. So we've got some encrypted text and what we're going to do is we're going to decrypt it even if we don't know the key. I'm going to do that just by going through every single key that's possible. Uh, I'm assuming you know the code, that you've read the pre-release and that you've watched my introduction to the brute force method so you've got the, a vague idea what I'm going on about. I'm also assuming that you know vp.net reasonably well. So what are we going to do in this pest? Well, we're going to create a new menu item and in that menu item we're going to um, basically use the same methodology as before for, de for, sorry, for decrypting the Caesar cipher but rather than um, just using one amount shift we're going to loop through many values of n and we need to make sure the output is readable. Um, we're going to use this encrypted text for a bit of fun and at the end of the video you'll find out what this actually means. Um, of course you could try and solve it now, um, probably work out uh, what it is or of course you could type it in and just try lots of these cipher text but in a few minutes you're going to learn how to brute force this. I'm not going to tell you the key, we're going to find out what the key is at the end. Um, the new menu item, I'm not going to code live for you, what I've done is added a new little section and in there put L and we're going to brute, it's brute forcing the Caesar cipher. So I'm assuming that you can all add a couple of uh, right lines into the display menu procedure. Right, now the fun bit. Let's go to the code and we're in the main we're in the main procedure and uh, we're going to place it just after K because that seems to be a pretty sensible place to put K cell and that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a new K uh, option and that's going to be L and the first thing we're going to do, because they've done it everywhere else, is display the ciphertext. So we're assuming that the user will type in the ciphertext using option D, and this will display it just to make sure it's been put in properly, really. Um, right, now rather than getting this amount shift, we need to put in a for loop. So I'm going to whack in a for next loop, and I've, I've going to use this variable called forced key. I could have actually called it amount shift. I'm going to go from 1 to 26. Uh, to be honest with you, that's not massively sensible. I guess 2 to, two to 25 would be a sen more sensible option, but I've typed it now, so we'll, we'll leave it in there. Um, right, the next thing we need to do is uh, assign to plain text, because that's what they, they do. But we're going to use the same methodology. I'm going to use this use Caesar cipher. So let's do that. And the cipher text we're going to pass is, of course, called cipher text. So we need to paste that. And the second bit we need to put in, which is uh, normally amount shift, of course, is going to be our forced key. So let's put that in. So we're going to call this 26 times. And we're going to put the first time we do it, we're going to put one in. Next time we're going to put two in three, four, five, you get the idea. And hopefully, well, by definition, one of those must be true. Uh, it must be the correct key to actually decrypt the message. Right, I suppose we ought to display our output and rather than just displaying the plain text like this, let's make sure we know which force key is actually going to decrypt the, the cipher text. So, oh, I've just remembered something. Um, if we put 126 in for the key, then that isn't actually decrypting, is it? It needs to be negative 1 to negative 26. So I've just put a cheeky little um, negative in front of this false key, just because um, it's, it's effectively the same as the decryption of uh, the C cipher up here. But that what they've done is they've, they've just put this little negative there. We're going to actually pass it as a negative. It doesn't really make a difference. You could also have set this up to, to loop through negative values on the for loop. But that's just to decrypt. Um, so now what we're going to do is display um, the key. So I'm going to put a bit of literal text there. And then we're going to concatenate the forced key. And let's put another bit of text at the end of it. One little thing to note. If the exam board give you 
a specific output format like this, you stick to it absolutely faithfully. If there are 12 dots here and 16 dots there, you need to make sure that your output has 12 dots and 16 dots. If there's spaces here and here, make sure yours has spaces. Um, and of course, if they've given you a different variable name to use, you should, you should use their variable names. Always stick to the specification given to you by the exam board for any piece of code. Right then. We now need to display the plain text. Well, there's a procedure to do that, so let's just use it. I think I'll put a little right line in afterwards just to make it a little bit clearer. Right, we need to test it. Um, so let's test this and we better enter the cipher text, so option D. And I've actually put it into the clipboard, so let's just paste it in. Bang. And you can see that was the same as what was on the PowerPoint. And now let's press a key. And now we're going to go to option L, which will force it. And hopefully we will get a load of um, output. Bang. If I make this a little bit bigger so that we can see what we're doing. And I just scroll to the top. We can see that the ciphertext was that. And then we can see key one and two, three, four, you get the idea. And we scroll down and we scroll down and hopefully one of these is right and hopefully it's number 15. Wonderful. So where the key is 15, we can see that we've actually got some plain text that makes sense. And hopefully none of the others do. Otherwise that'd be a bit of a freaky coincidence. But you can see that the plain text reads uh, exam is on Monday, 3rd of June. So, what we've just done is tried every single key possible, and one of them did produce a sensible output. So, we've brute forced, we've basically decrypted the Caesar cipher without knowing the key, and now we know the key and we know the secret message. And that, that, that's the basic gist of it. Uh, I hope you found that useful. Um, obviously, I'm going to have do the same thing with the rail fence and um, we'll do the same thing with the steganography um, but I want to do slight twists on them just so you can see a couple of different methods. Right.